Well, today on Nation Window Bleeders Podcast, we're talking all about the numbers, like the hard facts of your business. And you're probably not tracking what you should or what I think is the best, and everybody can be better. So if you're in window cleaning, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Seven years of content, tons of shows to watch. If you're not new and it's your repeat time, well, what's up? Thanks for coming back. But today we're talking about something that's uh, really quite boring. Always, there's a lot about business that's kind of boring, right? So numbers being one of them. Um, you know, uh, the business side, clerically stuff just sometimes is boring. So if you're listening to this, it obviously means you want to do something, be better, you know, advance your company. And numbers are really one of them. I think that a lot of people do not have enough data uh, at their disposal to really tell you what's happening. And I'll tell you. You could say, oh yeah, we're up we're up this year because it feels like it. Or it's been slow because it feels like it. But then you look at your numbers and you're like, oh, actually this August was better than last August and it felt slow because you had another year of experience, right? Things were running smoothly. Facts are numbers. Numbers are facts. You cannot really lie when you're looking at specific numbers because numbers are factual, right? If you say, okay, here is my gross from last year. Here's my gross from this year. Those are numbers. You can do a direct comparison instantly right between them. There's a lot of factors. I get that. But between those two numbers, you know everything right away. It's the same thing with, uh, you know, marketing. How much advertising did you spend now? What's your cost? What's your labor? What's your, all of those things end up telling you if your company is healthy or if it's not. And the big, big, big piece to that is that most people don't know. So they don't know what they're paying on labor. They know they're hourly, but they don't really know. They don't know the costs. They don't know the cogs. They don't know the the entirety of their company. They just keep throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it sticks. And you're not going to be like that. You are going to be a numbers wizard. But it's boring, so we got to get through this first. Uh, but no, if you don't know your numbers, I'm telling you, there's huge benefits to all of them. But I have a few of them that I think people aren't tracking. And the first one, and a big, 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 big one, is tracking your incoming calls, like tracking where new customers come from, how they heard of you. And you go, well, yeah, not Google. Okay, well, if you just put in Google, what what part? Are you doing ads? Did they search? What terms did they search? Like you can get in depth as much as you want. Now it's very hard to get, you know, really in depth with some of these questions, but just to track it is huge because you spend tens of thousands of dollars on marketing. Maybe you do, maybe you spend a hundred thousand dollars, maybe you don't spend any. But if you are doing any advertising, any marketing, you're spending money. And I'm telling you, as somebody who went through the phone book era, is if you don't know what you're spending your money on, you don't know if it's working or not. You just don't know. And there's so many times where you're like, you know, I'll give you my example in the phone book. But I said, man, I, I, I know that there's some elderly people still use the phone book. This is years and years and years ago. I still use their phone book. I got to I got to do it. I I get, you know, I probably don't make a lot on it, but man, I, you know, probably make a few thousand dollars from the phone book. And well, our phone book guy comes once a year and he goes over everything and then you re-sign up for the next year and, you know, the whole thing. So I pulled all my numbers because I'd started tracking things really kind of in depth. And I found that I had one job at our truck minimum the entire year from a phone book. And it was a lady who was moving. She was moving into a uh, assisted living facility and she was selling her house. Well, her kids were selling her house and she wanted to get that done. So the entire year I spent a few thousand dollars 
to make $149 from a one-time customer that was not going to be hiring us again. And at that point, that does not make it worth it. I know you're trying to catch market share. I know you're trying to catch, you know, get them all like the, the Pokemon. But the reality is, is that I'm not going to spend a bunch of money to not even just break even. Like, if I break even, but I get everybody in my rotation and I can do six-month closes, every six months I'm doing it, it makes sense, even if I broke even. But for something like that, it does not make sense. There's some people out there who have done things, they didn't track it enough, they were like, ah, oh, it's pretty good, and then they realize that it's not. Or they look at it and they go, oh, this is not good, but they haven't really tracked it. Maybe it is good, but you don't know unless you actually track it. And it's got to be hard numbers, real numbers where you can put it into a boring spreadsheet, you can put it into a boring graph, and you can see, okay, I spent $5,000 on XYZ. It brought me in $21,000 in new business. Okay, were those good jobs? Yes. Were they repeat? Most of them. Were they? That's a great, great, great ROI. Okay, that works. We could tweak it and then we could track it. Again, split testing, which we talk about all the time. If you're split testing, you need numbers because I have to say, okay, there's five people this way and there's seven people this way. This way is better. Or there's five people and now there's only one person. It's not better. You have to have the numbers to track that. And incoming calls is extremely important because if I can find out where they come to me, right? If I know somebody called me or they sent me a messenger through Facebook, I know it's Facebook. If they send me, uh, uh, if they call me, I can tell them, you know, and how did you hear of us? Simple question. They're more than willing to, oh, I just Googled window cleaning near me. Okay, great. We're ranking for that term. Write it down. Track all of it because incoming numbers, as important as repeat customers are, incoming numbers means you're active paying for leads. What does that look like? And here's the thing: there's a call. There's there's a a term called cost of acquisition, right? It's a basically it's a, a how much did it cost you to get a person to book with you? And here's what this means: if I spend hundred dollars in ads and I get ten people. And those 10 people ask for quotes and I get one of those people, then if I spent whatever I spent for one person, my cost of acquisition was $100 on one person because one person booked. Okay, would you spend $100 for a lead? Well, all of you, I'm guessing, as a residential lead, you know, would be like, no, that's too much. Okay, so what is your average cost of acquisition? I can go, you know, so many people complain about uh, Groupon and all these other things you know, like Service Magic Home Advisor and Angie, which they've all now turned into one, turned into one, turned into one. I think it's Angie now. But they're like, oh man, they charge you like $28 a person. Okay, is that on par with what you're paying? And if they tar- charge you $28 a person, what's your actual cost of acquisition? And you're like, well, it's 28 No, because you don't close every single one of them. If in a month's time you have 10 leads, it's $280. How many of those 10 did you actually book? Two? Well, that means that each person costs you $140. That's a cost of acquisition. That's how you track where your money is being spent and what it's bringing in. That's where you see if this stuff works. If you go, ah, yeah, you know, it, it, but it's good. It's good to have it out there. And okay, that's fine if you're okay with making a loss. If you think the added unseen benefits are bigger than dollars, fine. But the only way to do that is to track it. What about your hourly production? Are you tracking your hourly production? Maybe it's just you. Maybe you have employees, but you're like, well, they, they make 15 bucks an hour. Okay, is there not any other costs to the labor? Like the hourly, like what's their insurance cost? What, you know, workers comp, what all of the costs, what does it actually look like? What are those hard numbers look like? Now you go, oh, okay, well, I thought it was $15 and I was making 100. Now it looks like it's $38 that I'm spending. You're like, wow, I'm spending $38. Yes. 
This is where labor comes in. This is why those companies that are out there, you know, making $50 an hour just aren't able to do much because they don't have the income. It costs you $38 when it's all said and done, say, for a person. Well, now that comes out of your ticket. Now they have to produce X amount. If $38 out of 100, okay. But then is it 100 all the time? Are there days that they make way less than that? Okay, are there days you lost money? If you're not tracking that, if you don't actually know the facts, you don't know. You look at the whole thing, which is a great ending, you go, ah, we made more this year. Okay, but are there things you can change in order to increase or decrease spending or earning? Tracking is boring, but it's so factual. So factual. One of the interesting things about WCR is that we track everything. Chris is a numbers nut. And when I say numbers nut, the program and software running for everything, I could tell you any question you could possibly have about WCR in an instant. Literal, couple keystrokes, you would have an entire, you know, one year versus 13 years versus, you know, the five year, like I could tell you everything. Because it's there, it's tracked, it's numbers. So now when you're looking at factual stuff, man, this month seems slow. You look at it, no, we're up like 30%. Oh, no, it's just running smoothly, I guess. You can see because it's facts. Facts don't lie. It's not a feeling. It's not a, oh, I think we're doing pretty good. Right? You have to be factual and numbers are factual. Our production is just one that people really don't know that number of. Because the other thing is too, how many times have people said, oh, they make $100 an hour? Really? It's $100 even. That's what, well, I'm not saying, okay, this you don't know. You don't know. Because if you're averaging right there at $100 even, then you don't really know. You've looked at the surface, which is great, but you've not dove in. If you tell me that it's $103.17, I know you've done your research. I know you know exactly what's going on. A lot of people don't. Remember, we exchange our time for money. Literally what we do. Yeah, there's some costs. You gotta buy soap, new rubber, but we sell our time. And if somebody's buying our time, how much does it cost to give you the time, right? How much of my time am I selling? For what amount? So you have to know. Have to know production. With production, there's a lot of other stuff, but it's overall expenses. Overall expenses, people just don't know. They go, okay, well, here's what I did. I did, uh, you know, $100,000 gross, and I did, um, you know, um, $10,000 net. I made $10,000. Okay, technically, from 30,000 feet, yes. But where did your money go? Well, you know, I, we had this, and I, oh, I, I bought a computer. I th okay, okay, okay. In order for that 30,000 foot view to be any meaning or the, the 10K net versus 100 gross, whatever, in order for that to at all make sense, it has to be tracked. If you said, well, we made a profit of $10,000 last year. Okay, so does that mean your bank account has $10,000 just sitting there? Well, no, you know, okay, so you didn't because that went somewhere that wasn't profit. That was something. Was it a disbursement to you? Was it? The problem ends up being is when you don't know what it costs or what you're earning, you don't know if this is even makes sense. If you're like, oh man, I'm paying myself and you don't care, it's fine. But if you're doing all of this and you go, okay, last year we profited this much, okay? If there is a $10,000 profit from last year, what are you increasing your marketing and advertising for this year? Well, I mean, you know, we just got more customers. We'll be, okay, so are you not basing your marketing or your advertising off of numbers? Well, if you don't know your numbers well enough, then you can't even tell what percentage you have to free up. And the big piece is, is that if you increase... So last year you made 50,000, this year you made 100,000, you should double your budget. 
because you doubled your profit. If you doubled that, it goes back into your reinvesting and that's how you grow. That's exponential growth. That's how you go year 150, year two, 100, year three, 200, year four, 400. If you can double that way because of the way that you're increasing, the bigger the beast, the more you feed it, the more advertising you need to take on to carry the amount of staff and trucks. If you do all of that, what are you basing it on? Are you just like, oh, well, we need more. More is just an idea. It's a dream. It's a thought. We need seven more. That's a fact. And that can be in anything. That could be in your business, in your growth. That could be in your advertising. It could be in absolutely everything. When it's factual, I'm telling you, you know what is happening, but you know what you can do to change things. If you look at it and go, man, this just does not make sense. Okay, change it or remove it. You look at it and go, man, more than half of every new customer I get is from my SEO. Spend more on SEO. Do the SEO. Don't go, oh, I'm saving costs by now dropping my SEO. Or I'm here. I'm going to you know, leave. That. If that proved itself to you to be absolutely incredibly uh, important, why would you drop it? Why would you stop it? Why are you out there spending something where you're losing ROI when you have something you're winning ROI? Wouldn't you take that money and invest it somewhere you're making more money back? If you do something that works more, you'll make more. Okay, shameless plug, I know. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do uh, on top of giving you guys uh, 30 minutes of listening to me babble. I have put orders in and I would love to put your orders in and I really genuinely want to. So please shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Just be like, yo, Jersey, my order's in the cart. Click save this cart, I can see it. I'll put it in, cost you nothing extra. I get credit for it. And then you're one of my favorite people on the planet. It's just fact. So do that. Uh, it's how I make money and how I live. Also, American Window Cleaner Magazine. The AWC Magazine has been around since 1986. I've only owned it for three years. It's amazing. We've, we've done it. Such great, great content. Awesome. Just the feel is, it's just amazing. If you don't believe me, go awcmag.com. Get the subscription. It's a paper magazine that comes to your door. Genuinely amazing with custom stickers. So go do that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. It's, it's all nerding out to doing this. You're watching a podcast or listening to a podcast right now about window cleaning. So yeah. Okay. Well, shameless plug done. I have to do that because I have to live, you know, exist in this planet. So, um, but another one that people kind of don't look at when we're talking numbers is the existing customers to the new customers. And the part that people really miss out on here is that I absolutely wholeheartedly think you should spend at least the same amount of money on the existing customers as you do on the new ones. Now, you may have four customers. You just started and you're like, mm, kind of need more customers. Okay, there's exceptions, got it. But an important thing about a repeat customer is they already know you like, you love you. They've already trusted you. You've already done your cost of acquisition. Now you have a cost of reacquisition. Could be an email blast, free. Or maybe you pay 20 bucks a month or whatever. Could be texts, okay? That might be a cost. But you may be doing the dentist clothes. That's free. It's always free. You're just scheduling them again right away. What number of existing customers are rescheduled? Yeah, you know how many new customers there are. You can tell who's new because that's what you're looking for. Everybody focuses on new, but they don't focus on the existing customer. They don't look at it and go, okay, out of all of our customers, we're running a 96% repeat every six months. And I'm not just saying you go, well, I think most of them do. No, 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 no. Numbers, facts. What are your repeats? Tell me what your repeats are. You don't know because you don't track that. Well, how do you know if you're getting enough repeat? How do you know that when somebody comes in the door, you're going to keep them? You don't. 
If you don't know the numbers and you're not tracking it, you just don't know. So I want my goal to be 100% of every customer that comes in the door uses me every six months at least. And you're like, what? That's dentist clothes. When you're done, you schedule the next appointment right away, just like the dentist does. Three months, six months, they choose six months, you go. Now, I know that if I can pay to get someone in, now, I know it's not going to be 100%. So this is a false number, but darn close. But say it's 100%. I know that if I spend $25 to get a new customer in, that is, say, my average ticket's 300 bucks. I know that I'll have them for a long, long time. I know that as 100%, that means if I get somebody in and it's $300, I know it's $300, $600 a year for 10 years is $6,000. That's a 6,000 over 10 year customer. Now, how much does that $25 make sense? Right? If I'm getting them into my, my world and every customer I get, I keep, I am more willing to increase that. Now, if your retention is like 12%, well, it's pretty fair to know that, okay, if I pay this amount for this customer, they're probably not going to be coming back. Or they may someday, and I don't know. If you increase your amount of money that you're repeating or making in frequency, you know that bringing them in is going to be a longer-term shot. And not all of them I know, but percentage-wise or numbers-wise, you'll know. So now if you're paying, say you do have that customer, it's like, man, this is not working. I'm getting a ton of people, but it's like I'm spending like $180 on a cost of acquisition for somebody for 300 bucks. It's like, okay, that sucks. Yes, those aren't great numbers, but if you're at 100% repeat, okay, you paid the cost of acquisition. Six months from then, you're just making $300 because they're in your in your world. Now does it make sense? There's so many pieces to, to business that if you're not really tracking, you don't really know if it's good, if it's bad, if it's down, if it's up, if it works, if it doesn't work. You're just guessing. And you would you would agree that you are not always perfect on your intuition. And with that being said, is every minute of your entire life has been just that. It's been a minute. You Time has been part of your life forever. It's never stopped. It's there. You should know that better than anything. How many of us have been like, ah, oh, man, it's got to be like 4 o'clock, and you look, and it's like 2. You're like, huh? What? You do not always know fact, even if you think you do. So when you're like, well, yeah, but I'm a pretty good, I know pretty much, pretty much isn't fact. And guess what? Sometimes it's really four o'clock and you think it's two. And then you base every decision, financial move, growth, everything towards a number that isn't a number. It's an idea. If you said, ah, oh, man, that feels like five, I'm leaving. You leave work and somebody calls you like, dude, it's like three o'clock. What, what are you, where are you at? You get fired from a job because of that. You go, well, no, I mean, I just, it felt like five. Well, you're basing your entire company and everything you do and spend and grow and don't grow all on what you think is happening, but not fact. It's amazing. It's, it's really, truly amazing. And it's boring. <laughs> I know it's boring. And that is the reason why a lot of people don't do it because they don't feel like there's a lot out of it. So many people are looking ahead and not looking back, which I get it, right? A windshield is so much bigger than a rearview mirror. I understand. But there still is a rearview mirror. And you have to keep an eye behind you. You have to see where you've come from. What have you done? How did you get here? If I know how I got here, I know if I need to do the exact same thing or if I need to do something different, right? And let's get into gross and net real quick. There's a really, really big disconnect and gross in that. And most people, when you talk to somebody and they go, oh man, we made 200,000 last day. Everybody talks about gross. Gross is for show. Net is for no. Like I know my facts. And a big piece of this puzzle is go, man, I got 
$100,000 in profit. Really? Is it sitting in an account somewhere? Is it, well, no, I mean, you know, I paid, you know, myself or whatever. And no, it's not quite, well, then it's not really profit. Something happened, you're not tracking it, right? If you figure all your numbers out and then the, the numbers, the facts or the math don't work out, there's something going on. But you don't know unless you track net versus growth. Growth, gross is is a great number to know how much you brought in. Man, I did a million dollar a year. Yeah. What did you What did you net? Ah, we lost money. Oh, like it doesn't make sense. But that's literally the fact of a lot of companies. And even if you're working and you're like, well, you know, I pay myself, and man, it just doesn't mean it's it's just not worth all the headaches. Okay, you're doing something wrong. Because what you're making is not worth the headaches. When you look at the numbers, you're like, dude, I'm not making that. Okay, so let's really dive in and see where you're failing. So many people just look at it and they're like, ah, it just doesn't make sense. Well, why? Well, it just doesn't. Probably the economy and Biden and whatever excuses that they have don't end up working that way, right? Maybe it is the 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 climate of... Uh, the um, economy. Maybe it is, you know, uncertainty. Maybe it is all that stuff. But unless you actually know, you don't. You're just guessing. And again, guessing is not safe. When you talk gross versus net, the real thing is how much did it cost you to make this, right? You pay yourself. That is part of pay. That's part of running the company. Okay, so where does the net then come from? If your net is zero, but you paid yourself. Yeah, you made a living wage, you did whatever, but you have a lot of things that need to come out of that money. Where does that net come from? What does the net look like? How are you advertising? Where is your marketing coming from? How are you planning your next marketing budget if you don't know where your net versus your gross? I always like to go off of gross for my advertising, but it's because I know everything and know that I can do that. But if I say 10% of gross should be your advertising budget. So last year, what did you make? $100,000. This year, your advertising and marketing budget should be $10,000. But what if your net last year was 1000 bucks? Well, now you just ran into a hole to spend the money on the thing you didn't really have. But you didn't know that because you didn't know your numbers. Right? Oh, but I'm going to make more money this year. We're going to hope you're going to make more money this year. But again, if you're not tracking your numbers as far as where the people come from, is the $10,000 actually going somewhere? If I can take $10,000 and I can make 100000 back, that's really good ROI. Whatever I'm doing, I want to do more of. But if I spend $10,000 and I just make some customers, I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if they're good customers. I don't know if they're locked in. I don't know if they're quality. I don't know any of that. If I know my note, my gross and my net... I know what I have available and what I've earned. Now, if you're not making a profit, let's look at it and see why we're not making a profit. Well, this, 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 and I got trucks and okay. Okay, so you got all that stuff. That's great. What are they making an hour? What are they actually earning every hour? Well, it's $63 is our average. Okay, well, then that's way too low way too low to run this business. That's why you're not making money. That's why it doesn't feel right and it doesn't make sense to have all these headaches for it. If you increase the amount that they can earn or make or produce, it increases everything. But unless you know that that's part of the problem, you don't know what to change. If you are married and your wife comes to you and says, this isn't working, we're done. And you go, oh my gosh, what's wrong? What's happening? I don't know. How can I fix something that I don't know, right? If the mechanic comes to you and they're like, yeah, your car's broken. Like, all right, well, what's broken? What can we fix? I don't know. Okay, figure it out. No, I don't know. Give us like um, $5,000. That should probably cover it. If they don't know, are you going to do that? No. You're like, no, figure it out first. That's business. Figure it out first. Then you know everything else about it if you track your numbers. If you figure out your numbers and you really, 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 there's no such thing as too much info. 
because every bit of info can be turned and changed so you can see different aspects of it. If you don't have numbers, you're looking at a 2D picture, a cartoon. If you have numbers, it's 3 and 4D where you could turn it inside out, upside down, and see every piece to it. But it's boring. So a lot of people don't do it. And you're not a lot of people. So you're probably going to be amazing. Speaking of amazing, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. Oh, that was a awful uh, segue. But I am. And uh, I want to be awesome for you. And I want to put your orders in. So let me do that. My number is 862-312-2026. It's a cell. Text me. Call me. Whatever you want. I'd love to put the orders in. Please, it costs you nothing extra. And uh, I make um, some cheddar. And I want to make cheddar because I'm from Wisconsin. And I like cheddar. And also, uh, go out and get yourself a subscription to the greatest window cleaning magazine in the history, history of the world. It's the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Email or the uh, website's super easy to go get your subscription. It's awcmag.com. Just go there. Or do forward slash sub and get your subscri subscription. Do it because you're awesome. Um, also, thanks for everything. If you have purchased from me before and you've made it this far and you're still listening, thank you. Uh, so many of you people um, just let me put orders in and let me be part of the journey and i really genuinely appreciate it so thank you very very much either way go out there track your numbers i'm telling you it's important but more important go out there and be happy